So I bought this Mia mechanical robot claw arm and it comes with these servos. So it comes with four of these Metal Gear servos, which are fairly good quality, it looks like. Um, I just want to say I've got no affiliation with Mia and I've paid full price for this kit. And it comes with all the stuff. Uh, this kind of laser cut acrylic that you need to build the robot arm. And then you get this like board for attaching the servos to and this cable so you've got uh, six wires one for each servo for the the pwm signal and then a ground and a five volt but i'm not going to use this board or these wires what i'm going to use is an esp32 cam i'm going to mount that on the top and a PCA 9685 and I'm going to use this because I don't really have enough pins on this or I might not have enough pins on this to run all the servos and uh, do whatever else I want to do so I'm going to be able to control this wirelessly um, through the camera so I'll put all that together and we'll see how that goes and I just might add that while I've got every everything out here like this, this will connect to the I2C bus on the on the cam. So it's only going to use two pins from the cam, and then I can control up to 16 servos from it. But I'm just going to control four at the moment. But if I wanted to, I could control up to four of these robot arms with one of these and one one ESP32. So I've got everything connected and wired up now and everything seems to be working. And I've got the, the ESP32 cam mounted on top of the claw, just so I can see where I'm going with the arm. And then at the back here, I've got an OLED screen, which is showing the IP of the ESP32 cam. And the reason I've done that is because otherwise you've got to get the IP from the serial monitor and Connecting these up to a serial monitor is not that easy. Um, so if you, if, you, if you leave it for a while as well, the IP can change. And then the PCA, both the PCA 9685 and the OLED screen are connected to the I2C bus of the, of the ESP32 cam. And I did have to hack the library a little bit on this. It didn't work kind of straight out of the box. Uh, this one did, the OLED screen did, but the PCA uh, PWM driver didn't. And the reason why is because I have to use a second set of I2C pins because this, the default I2C pins, which are 21 and 22 on the ESP32, are not broken out. So all this is working now, and I can control it from a web browser, from either a tablet or my computer. So I'll show you how that's working in the next scene. These are the controls here and I've just put in some slider controls. So this is the claw say, so we can open the claw and we can close the claw. And when we close it, it kind of comes into view of the camera. So let's open it right up. And then let's see if we can pick up that girl there, that Lego person. See? Okay, there we go. Now let's try to move forward a little bit. Okay. All right, now let's see if we can move forward a little bit. kind of right in front of the camera we just need to get a little bit forward all right let's see if we can all right now let's hopefully we can get them all right now let's see if we can pick them up yes all right 
There we go. That's rotated a little bit. Okay. I've updated the code and I've put in buttons for the left, the right and the center servos but I've left the slider on for the claws. So I'm going to see how that goes. I'm going to try and pick up that Lego person and see how that goes. It's a little bit slower. Alright, so I'll put both of these versions of code on the repo and you can decide which one you want to use if you want to have a look at them. Um, the one with the sliders and the one with the buttons. So now I'll drop the Lego person, open the claw up. There we go. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take you through the code and I'll see you in the next scene. I'm just going to take you through the code to connect the Mi Arm robot arm to the ESP32 cam. And I basically, I got this code, well most of it, from uh, Random Nerd Tutorials. I used this one where they connect the ESP32 cam to a remote control car. So now they are using the ESP32 cam to power some motor drivers. And I'm using it to, I guess, to drive some servos. So. Um, a couple of things I had to change. I had to include this Arduifruit the wire library for the I2C communication and the Arduifruit uh, PM servo driver and also the GFX and the SSD1306. This was for the OLED. So these two were for the OLED and these two libraries were for I2C um, for PWM driver okay so um, now the thing for the for the i2c from the ESP32 cam is it's the the default pins on the ESP32 are 21 and 22 but we have to define SDA and SCL pins uh, specifically because 21 and 22 are not broken out on the ESP32 cam so I've defined the SDA pin as 15 and the SCL pin as 14. And then um, this is just to use the, there's there's a whole bunch of tutorials online about using the, the PCA9685. And I'll link to what I think is a really good one in the description. Um, so this is the PWM driver and this is the OLED screen. Okay, so when you initialize the PWM driver, normally, like if you were just going to use it on a, on a standard ESP32, you'd just, you'd just put in the address, the I2C address, but because we're using the custom I2C, we have to include the address to the two-wire, our, our custom-defined uh, two-wire interface. And... Um, now this posed a bit of problems with this library here with the Adafruit with the Adafruit uh, PWM servo driver library and I'll show you what I mean. So this is the library here and this is the the function, the overloaded function that takes in the two wire as an argument and what it had initially it had an ampersand there and also 
and ampersand here. So, um, now that didn't really work. I don't know what was going on. I think it was leaving something on the stack. So I had to change this to, to a pointer basically. So basically it just took the address of my now, of my newly defined I2C interface. And then I also had to change it in the .h file here. So I had to change that to a, to a pointer. So it would just, I could just use the address and then I could do with it whatever I liked in the code and uh, what changes I made in the code would also reflect in the PMW uh, servo driver. Um, so then the other change I made, I guess, was just to the, to the HTML code. So I put in here, I just put in some sliders instead of, um, instead of the buttons that did have one slider in an old piece of code, uh, which was, which was using, which was the remote control car with just the ESP32. Um, and then the other thing I had to change was the function to update the slider. So you can have a look at this. I'll put all this on GitHub and I'll also put the code with the buttons in it on GitHub instead of the sliders. And you can have a look at that too. And if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. Um, and also I'll leave my changes to this library uh, on the, on the GitHub repo. And then, um, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Oh yeah. So I had to change the command handler because the command handler is what receives the commands from the, from the web interface. So I just had to put in here, uh, when it receives the the selected servo and the servo angle, then I had to update that particular servo with whatever particular angle it was receiving. So I just had to basically add this part in. And then everything else I kind of left pretty much as it was, except in the setup function, where I had to start our new I2C interface here. And then I started the PWM and the display on the I2C bus bus that I, this is the, um, PCA, PCA 9685. And this one is the OLED. And then after I started that, I, I then restarted the I2C, our newly defined I2C interface again. So I ran this twice and I don't know if I needed to run that twice, but, um, I just wanted to make sure that it didn't overwrite anything in here or here that I that I had done here to when I started it. So that's basically why I started again. I actually don't know if that's going to do anything. And I set my PM, PWM frequency to 50. And then um, I display setting up. And then the last thing I display at the end of this, I display my Wi-Fi local IP and I initialize my camera by setting all the angles to either 90 or 70, which I had to set the, the, the bottom one, which was the rotation server, servo to 70. And that's pretty much it. So I'll put this up on GitHub and if you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.